Hi, my name is Brian Caffo, and welcome to this week's Ask Brian part of our weekly newsletter. You can sign up for our newsletter, Monday Morning Data Science. Uh, link is in the video description below, and you can ask a question there. So I'm going to talk about something that I get asked a lot about, which is basic variations on the question, what should I be doing? Should I be a Bayesian or should I be a frequentist? And I have other videos where I've talked about that. And in this video, what I wanted to talk about was a paper by Cass called Statistical Inference, the Big Picture. It's in Statistical Science. And he outlines a paradigm that he calls statistical pragmatism. And in statistical pragmatism, he just really lays out what I consider the way nearly all applied statisticians think about statistics. And I think when you think about statistics this way, it makes the distinction between Bayesianism and frequentism seem less important. Now, having said that, you know, there are some, you know, kind of edge cases that I would say maybe don't fall under, you neatly fall under this model. For example, instances where people really spend a lot of time on their design and their inference is based on their design. So I'm thinking about people who might do survey sampling and their inference is based on the um, you know, sampling probabilities and things like that. So you know, separating those edge cases out and thinking about the way you know, most people are approaching a statistical analysis of observational data and that sort of thing. Uh, let me go through uh, Cass's uh, thinking a little bit, or at least how much how I interpret it, and then talk about how that relates to uh, Bayes versus frequency thinking. So he talks about the classical model, and the classical model is what's taught in nearly every single statistics class, is that you have a population, and that you have data, and that the population generates the data somehow. Maybe you get the data from the population by sampling, or there's a data generating mechanism, or something like that, that is stochastic, okay? And then you go in the reverse, you go from the data back to the population, that is the process called inference or statistical inference, I'm not spe there we go. Um, and that picture is shown in every statistics class. I've drawn it before. And what he's suggesting is we need to replace this picture by what is more like what people actually do. And basically he was is suggesting to we'll separate, let's separate out the ideas that the, the data live in the real world. They were generated by real world mechanisms. In contrast, things like probability and randomness and Bayesian thinking and frequency thinking, these all live in a theoretical world, a mathematical world, a perfectly described world um, where we have things like scientific models and statistical models, and hopefully those two inform each other. So there's an arrow pointing back and forth there. Okay. Um, so the idea of drawing this diagram is that the data would inform the scientific models and the statistical models, and hopefully they would also maybe point an arrow in the back direction by new study design to collect new data uh, related to the models and that the interplay between those leads us from the data and from the inferences from our models to conclusions. Those conclusions will hopefully relate to real truths about the real world, which is what we're hoping to get at. But when you think about statistics this way, uh, then the 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 distinction between Bayesian and frequency thinking exists only in this theoretical world. And it seems a little bit more quaint. Uh, if you think this way, then what you're really saying is, uh, what's the right way to think about statistics? It's, well, whatever helps you uh, interpret the theoretical world better and describe the theoretical world better so that you can personally more effectively uh, apply it to your data and, and think of it as a lens through which you look at your data uh, to tell you important real truths, okay? Um, and so, you know, one answer for what, you know, whether should I be a Bayesian or should I be a frequentist? And the answer to that is, well, which of those do you understand better? Because if you understand that aspect of the theoretical world better, you're probably going to be better at applying it to the data. So this is a way that's, that's generally not talked about when talked about Bayes versus frequency distinctions. Um, so just going back to Cass's model, um, you know, he, this, this model, uh, this idea of statistical pragmatism gets at the point that all models are wrong. Some models are useful. That's a famous quote from Box. Every introductory statistics uh, course talks about it. 
And um, it, what he's really emphasizing is that paper is that, well, you know, when we teach this, what we often do is say all models wrong, are wrong. Some models are useful. Wink, wink, nod, nod. Therefore, those models are true. And he's saying, well, no, no, don't forget the all models are wrong part of the statement continues to be true, even if some models are useful and that, you know, that you can come to conclusions like, you know, your, your, your data are not IID, you know, thinking about your data as IID may be useful for discovering real world truths, but your data is not ID, IID, but in general data is not IID. Your, your data is not Gaussian is, you know, not Gaussian. And, you know, not only is that true of your data, it's just true in general of data, you know, accepting some edge cases, maybe in quantum physics or something where they actually know the exact distribution of the, that comes about from the data generating mechanism. So the, the idea is uh, that the model is, is, is always wrong and that sometimes it's, it's useful and that, but not to forget about the part where the model is actually wrong. Um, and then when you, I think when you think about statistics this way, then you tend to start caring a little bit less about sharp divisions between Bayesianism and frequentism. You try and use what seems right at the time. Uh, you recognize that both of these approaches are ways of understanding the theoretical world. And, and that understanding of the theoretical world is going to help you understand the real world. And that's, again, not to trivialize this understanding of the theoretical world. Um, it, 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 if, if you can't understand it, then you can't apply it. So, um, but I think uh, it's an important mental shift it, thinking this way. And I think this is why what you see very often from applied statisticians is a little bit less of a concern over the sharp divisions between these foundational topics. Okay. Well, anyway, that's uh, my thoughts, and I thought I'd share it just because I reread Cass's paper the other day as someone was asking me this question about Bayesian versus frequentism, and I thought, oh, you know, this kind of nicely encapsulates why I don't care so much about this problem. <laughs> um, so, anyway, if you uh, you know have some comments, put them in the comment section below. If you have a question, uh, put it you know send me a question. If you have uh, a minute try and subscribe to the YouTube channel or at least subscribe to our newsletter and I will see you next week.